do as much as we can. Um, my name's Simon, and I'm going to be talking to you about our vision for television of the future that we call Fresco. And very much we're anticipating what's going to happen when display technologies change. This on the side here is, um, is a, an OLED screen, if you've seen them. And you can see just how thin that is. The bezel is also quite thin, but not as thin as these. These LCD panels, which are down to about uh, four millimeters now. Um, with OLED, uh, you do not, a front lid OLED, you do not need to have any bezel at all. So you can imagine tiling a wall like you would tile your bathroom. It's hopefully better than you tile your bathroom. <laughs> um, and where you're actually able to use the whole surface and just express yourself, and the television system will adapt itself to it. So we have four dimensions that we believe television systems will have the ability to explore. Firstly, is they'll be unobtrusive, they'll blend into your home environment. Secondly, that they'll be frameless. Every single piece of video and content that you see here today will be shown with its own size and shape. Thirdly, uh, we think that television systems will be ultra high definition. Totally believable if you go out there, I think. And fourthly, we believe that television systems will be ambient. In other words, they'll have the things of life around it. And I'm going to be driving this through a very simple HTML5 interface. Simply, we have here, the topology is, that we have a layout engine. It's a piece of software that's allocating tasks to a number of browsers. There's a browser here, there's a browser there, and there's a browser over here. And this is another one. In fact, any of you could pick up your device and simply couple up to our network and you could be driving it as well. In fact, I might hand this over to someone you to drive. But uh, we're um, able to choose what we want to put on the system. So Nancy here is going to bring some of the things of like Usually a different person on this. I'm going to pick up a different one. I'd like to hold Nancy. You can be Nancy. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> oh, you always pick on your friends. You always pick on your friends, you see, which is, uh, which is a fun thing to be able to do. So, uh, here we are. So, Bill is going to be uh, choosing to put on, for example, on this panel, uh, the family calendar. Uh, maybe some family photographs as well. And these will just pop up here. And we could just move those elements around, as you might imagine, just by dragging and dropping. So, for example, I could put the family calendar over here. I could take the photos and even put those photos, um, it says confidently, no, they're not going to move. Uh, the photos could move over here to the side, you see. And everything, if you notice, moved in a way that was televisual, I was accelerated, decelerated, etc. Anyway, you want to see some television. so. Bill is going to want to watch the Fox News. And uh, here we are. We get Santa out of the men's pummel in Southern California. Now, more than there's the picture, an HD picture, surrounded by some metadata describing the program, and then links at the bottom which allow you to follow through. Now, Nancy uh, is interested in these items at the bottom here. You just right, touch that. Yeah. More info? More info, and then you just follow that through to the website and Nancy can now look at that on the website right. and follow that through. We don't all have to be enjoying uh, Nancy's interest in Syria, which is a good thing to be interested in of course. Um, you can go back now to the you can get back to the application there. Yeah. Um, but the question is about what size should the picture be? I want you to think about that because television today is one size fits all. Right? You buy a TV, you put it in the corner of your room or on the wall, and basically you, your sentence forever afterwards, everything's going to be that size. So think about that. Would you like your picture in the morning when you're watching the news with your cornflakes to be that big, or maybe a little bit bigger, or maybe a little bit bigger? What size should it be? It should be no, no, scalable at will. Ah, oh, that's the point, yeah. So we think, we think that that's too big. Right, for the morning. Why? Because it's it's actuality TV. Notice, by the way, the pictures have moved over there on the side. Uh, it's, um, this is actuality TV. It's, the lighting's not very good. I mean, why not? That news content is very often like that, and that's the real world, isn't it? So, the question is, what should it be? And as we move through the program, you'll see that the items that are linked on the bottom change. So, we've now moved into weather forecast. This is now a sponsorship. You know, you move into the next item. Traffic, guess what, your, your, your own route into work. So this is broadcast, supplemented with broadband, as a cue to you, and if Nancy was to tick that, guess what, it's going to take you through to the traffic. You know. yeah. 
yeah. going to take you through to the traffic news for your area. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, this is broadcast, this is broadband, and that's this is real. At the bottom here, this was recorded obviously because we're not in the States right now. It is breakfast time there, but. Uh, Anyway, let's leave that to one side. So I'm going to move later in the day. Now, more real content coming here. Let's watch some uh, live television. I'm going to bring up here uh, BBC One. Don't worry, I'll have something for you to do soon. Uh, you can bring another one up. You can just choose your channel. If you choose TV and then live TV, just to prove multiple, and just choose a channel and drag it up. Oh, there you are. There we are. So BBC One and BBC Two are up there. Once again, we can choose how they're presented. So if you've you know, got a high BBC Two highlighted, just use this immersion control here. Just take it up by one notch. There we are. One notch. There you go. Yeah. There you are. You've got BBC One and BBC Two. You can imagine having you can imagine having other channels around it as well. The important point is that you know Saturday afternoon. And by the way, this is Saturday afternoon. You'd expect to see sports matches from different places. Uh, and, and, and so forth. Both of We've got the Great North Games there, uh, the, the uh, marathon. So, once we're watching television, I'm just going to quickly uh, take away BBC One just for a moment. Um, you're watching TV, and many of you will know this situation occurring in your household where this happens. And the child cries. Very simply, you know, the audio level triggers the control of this system, which actually says, I'm mean, going to inject the inject the picture, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go and look after the child or are you going to go back to the TV? <laughs> Obvious answer, you're going to go back to the TV. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just simply raise the immersion level of that TV content. We are, and what happens is the child goes there, we sent Dad off to look after the child, Dad's gone to check the child's all right, and we're going back to our very blocky television. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we can actually, we can actually unmute that. And get on. So the point of being, you know, it goes back to your point about scalability. How big should it be? I mean, we could make that picture, by the way, just to show you how small it can go. You know, we could actually reduce that down to a very small level, in fact, even smaller than that, you know, if you wanted to. And once again, that will move around. And when it moves around, by the way, um, the sound moves with it. And if I turn up the sound level, you should be able to see that. So let's, let's, let's uh, take, make the picture a bit bigger and you are near it. It's muted. It's muted. Oh, that's why. There we are. My fault. Right, so. You hear that move? Yeah. You can position it where you like. Janet pushes him inside and the others follow. Right, so let's, uh, let's leave that to one side. Let's move later in the day. I'm going to show you some sports content. And um, we've got to the All Stars basketball match here. I want you to notice some things here. Yeah. Firstly, you've got the picture surrounded by a wire frame which, come, which is lit up by data, um, actually showing you the performance of these characters. Every single thing you're seeing here is interactive, uh, including our friend over here. Television systems can now know how big something really is, and actually, because the screen size is known. So if we want to present something six foot six high, well we can do that. In fact, Dave, if you just um, click on, sorry Nancy, if you just click on the character there, um, and now you can just drag this bar across at the top, that's it, the whole thing, yeah. You'll change the character, we'll change the character, and this guy really is six oh foot eleven, right? <laughs> this, is, this is tall, I mean, you're tall, how tall are you? <laughs> you can come and measure you. Six foot eleven, you know how a kid feels like in a supermarket. And we're showing, we're here showing really effectively that we can use all this extra space, if you like, if the user wants it, to actually put additional content on. Now, we're watching this film, sorry, the program, and it's in a highly uh, immersed state. But once again, as I showed you before, we can change the size of that, we can make it really tiny if you want to. Um, and as we go through the program, so you get other opportunities to interact. So, for example, here, the user has the audience the opportunity to see the difference between two players. You've got uh, on this side Kobe Bryant versus LeBron James, and if um, you just touch the player versus player thing there, you now have the opportunity to choose the player. So if you choose this one here, for example, you can change the player that we're looking for, and you can also choose whether it's, def you know, whether it's defense or team contribution at the top there. 
So we give basically the opportunity to interact in that way. You can you can choose to do what you want to do locally. On this side here, at the top, every single one of those elements is um, every single one of those elements is in fact interactive. So you can find about the tickets, etc. This is all opportunities for the broadcasting. Moving forward a little bit uh, more in the uh, program. Have you ever been in that situation where you'd like to watch something with your friends? And uh, video conferencing systems tend to work in a forward direction. So if I was watching this program with my wife, I would not sit my wife in front of the TV whilst I watched the TV and talk to her. So here, some friends are now inviting us to take part in a video call. You could just say, yes, I'll join that. And let's, let's watch the program with them. You can look forward. Stop it there, but the point being, actually, this is about horizontal relationships. We support horizontal relationships as well as we do the forward ones, uh, and we think that those are very important. You know, as I say, you sit next to people, you glance at them, you don't look at them all the time uh, whilst you're watching something together. So, lastly, in the day, I, I want to move to a movie, and um, Bill um, wants to choose a movie, and he does so um, using a very old tool uh, movie posters. And in fact, Movie posters, which are really a synopsis of the whole story. If you, if you go to a gallery and look at a painting at the back of it, it's not a photograph. I mean, they don't have but it wasn't a photograph. It's not a, it's not a snapshot. It's a synopsis of all the key things that happened in a battle. In the same way that most film posters are a very cleverly created artistic composite of what the film is about. This will cycle around to some uh, films that are, are available to us. Um, we have uh, learned from our customers that buy rates for films go up when you show the poster. The poster is actually a, pot, a very positive asset. But anyway, what we're going to do with this is to uh, click on that and actually bring a film in to be shown. I'm just going to bring Sintel up. And let's go into this film. There's a trailer first, which has got a key point to it. movie, H264, 16 megabits, and we we'll just watch about 30 seconds of this. There is absolutely a reason why television should allow us to scale, you know, why you should be able to watch things large or small. 
Does it depend on the technical quality? I don't think it does. I think it depends on something else. It depends on your emotional engagement with the particular piece of content that you're watching. So just because this is a 4K movie does not mean to say we need to watch it that size. And in fact, in this next scene, I'm going to reduce it just a little bit to show, of course, that subtitles can go outside the frame. And of course, we can take that a logical stage, but we'll take that further and we'll make it really tiny. And we'll bring the lights up. Uh, and we'll bring some of those pictures back into the frame in the front here. Uh, Bill um, would like to have Nancy. No, no, let's have Bill. Um, Bill would like to bring in um, the Guardian newspaper. And so you'll see the Guardian feed coming up there. Um, you could actually want to find out more about that article. You just tapped on the Guardian, that would take you through, and you could go to the home page. But let's say, you, let's say, for example, you don't want to do that, and you actually want to go back to the thing. Just put it on the screen, add it to the screen. And what we're doing now, the system will now make room to put the Guardian up here. And in fact, what you could do is you could drag that Guardian, that ball there, over to this side here. So the system will now express the Guardian over here. Don't worry, it will take you just turn away for a second or two, there we are, um, and in fact we can actually raise the immersion level of it like that. So here we've got a 4K movie running, a newspaper, we've got RSS feeds of any types we like, we have any mixture, and family stuff as well, and, and we just really believe that... In the, the nanny cam. The tele bit, huh? In the nanny cam. <laughs> and the nanny cam, yeah, yeah, the nanny cam. So we believe that this, this mixture of broadcast, broadband, demotic, where actually it's synthesized together, managed by what we call the layout engine, actually is a very, very, very credible future for television. And actually one that is a tremendous opportunity for us, and very exciting, and one that we need to see um, as an industry. Yeah. You could also use a camera outside your building, that this is just your window. Sure, sure. You could. We have got, well, I, I could show you all sorts of examples. Uh, I mean, one uh, thing I will show you, uh, since we've probably got a minute or two, just at the end. Um, one thing I will just quickly show you, I'm just going to clear these things down. If I go back to um, another type of program, it's, uh, it's past lunch now, so it won't be so offensive to you, but uh, I'm going to bring in, uh, where are we, some TV. Let's, let's bring in MasterChef. And we did this with Shine, the production company. First time on MasterChef Australia. This is MasterChef Australia. It's which a big week. And the big week starts... So you've got, you know, promo for the company supporting the sponsorship. With their very own and we can change the size of that as we did before. You know, you can come down to... You can come down to a really small picture if you like. You can move that picture. Um, onto this other side, so if I take the volume level up, the chance to work inside the country's once again you can see the picture will move itself the picture will move itself round over here, you notice the sound pan round to, to move over there. Australia's next MasterChef. How do you want to watch your TV? I'll leave it there, I thought that was quite interesting. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you.